I was to go to the cemetery and the guy would dig the hole himself. The father. And none of the family was there. Are we talking wilderness here? We are talking wilderness. How do you make a path in that wilderness? How, how do you make a way for the Lord in that bunch of rocks? And what are these rocks? Fear, shame, sensibilities. It couldn't happen to me, therefore it didn't. Do you know what really bugged Jesus? How many times did you hear him say, you hypocrites? Right? You know what a hypocrite is? It's an actor. People, when they have these boulders in the path that they put for some reason, or we put, we have to act a certain way, don't we? The family had to pretend that their loved one died of cancer. And they prevented any of his friends from coming. And I've seen that in the hospital too, where families get involved and they, they absolutely will not allow <coughs> at that time, any kind of visits from a partner or anybody. That's the bad news. You know what the good news is? Because it's more than just an individual saying, I'm going to deny that this has happened or blame somebody. It's more a systemic thing, isn't it? It's bigger than us as individuals, right? This fear, this homophobia that is just rampant. I've said that my daughter is gay and this is the first church that I've ever said that in. I've had to pretend too, you know, that this closet thing is not a good thing. But anyway, if, if this can be a systemic thing, and it is, because I've been around Amanda's friends in Atlanta, and they say there are two things that happen if you're anything other than straight. Your families kick you out, and your church kicks you out. That's, that's, that, those are big roadblocks. And then people wonder why. Why don't they come to church? Who's going to listen to all that? I've listened to it at our annual conferences. I've listened to all the rhetoric until I, I would have to leave. So, good news. Every once, no, this is the only thing, this is the only time I know, other than some Quakers in Pennsylvania, where a congregation allows us to be who we are, which is what God wants. God wants us to be who we are and rejoice in it. God does not want us going through a minefield that we have created with our isms and our creeds and our fears and our blame and you know what it is this congregation has done the work and you have done something that I have not seen anywhere else and that is a repentance a turning around a change right it's a big change I don't know of another congregation like this. So I didn't come here to beat you up. I'm saying
saying thank God for you, for every one of you who have been willing to go against the current of hatred and blame. We have decided not to throw more rocks in people's place trying to get into a door of a church. And you wonder, where are the people? Where are the people? Where are they? It's going to take time to build trust to get some of these people in the door. Because they won't believe it. They won't believe that Salem exists. Because there are a lot of people who have got little signs out in front saying they're welcoming, but they've actually got a lot of rocks in the way. So celebrate. You have done something with the help of God that 99.9% .9 of congregations haven't even approached because they're so afraid. So celebrate. You've gone to the river. You've heard the crazy man, John. But you've also received the Spirit of God. And it takes the Spirit of God to change a church. Bless you all. Amen.